All right, guys, today's video is on the complete uh, four wave cycle of induction tuning. And I'd just like to thank everyone for the last video, tons of comments, some really, really great comments, some uh, really, really valid points and some idiocy in there as well. Uh, if you're the type of person that comes to the channel and just rides DFI sucks, this is probably not the channel for you. So maybe find someone else to follow. Uh, but then some really, really good comments on different pressures that DFI works. A couple of uh, misnomers about people saying it's not not um, the DSM ratio, it's actually the chamber. Uh, that's completely false. We've back-to-back -back this. Shops, we've helped to back-to-back -back this. And many good engine builders around the world have back-to-back -back this. Uh, it's been tested to death. And the whole point of the video wasn't to favor DFI because I had people, you know, again, DFI sucks or, you know, carbons this. I'm well aware of all the problems DFI has. This is why OEM um, sometimes run twin injectors, which a few people made points of. That helps wash the back of the valve and stops that carbonation process. But then again, we have Ferraris that uh, have far better um, injector time cycles, um, Mazda also, uh, and they don't seem to suffer from the carbonation problems that other DFI units uh, do. So there's a lot of factors that come into it, but the biggest point I broke the video down for was to understand why and what were the mechanisms behind why DFI actually makes more horsepower than port injection. And its number one contributor obviously is its DSM size. Uh, and again, interesting point, which I was gonna bring up, but didn't run out of time. A good race carby is actually around about 30 to 15 micrometers, so uh, interesting fact. All right, and the last point I'll make on all the comments and stuff like that, I had one person saying that there was over 30 years of um, papers on quench and we don't need it. Guys, if you've got that sort of stuff, please send it through. Uh, I've done a hell of a lot of testing in this area and I was actually just talking to an engine builder after I posted this about what a couple of engine builders had found. I've also heard Darren Morgan talk about this when we're talking about how close to get to the cylinder head. Quench is... Um, definitely needed, so let's let's rule that out of the way. If we look at all the top super stock, pro stock, top NA in the world, they're all using quench for a reason because it does accelerate that burn speed and it also improves thermal efficiency. But the bigger point uh, Alex made and even uh, Darren Morgan's made and a couple of other engine builders is we don't actually want to get too close depending on how much quench area we've got because it actually creates a pumping loss. 